Hi guys, this is the Idaho Picker. And uh, today I'm going to take you through um, about 120 slides. I'm going to do it as quickly as I can, but at the same try time trying to let you see some things. This is all about the Super Bowl and the potential uh, disaster there and who knows even possibly other places. My focus today is on the Super Bowl and southern Louisiana. Now, just moving right ahead, um, as we know we have the Baltimore Ravens uh, playing in the Super Bowl today and we have the 49ers. And uh, if you simply just look uh, at the Wikipedia you'll see real quick that as you see highlighted there in yellow that the Ravens, for whatever reason, um, their name was chosen based on, as it says here, the team's name was inspired by Ed Edgar Allan Poe's poem, The Raven, as uh, Poe lived for a time in Baltimore and died there in 1849. It's interesting that he died in 1849, and that is also the, the number or the name of the 49ers as well, and their team was named after uh, the 49ers, which was in 1849 in San Francisco. Uh, that was when the gold rush happened and when the term eight, the 49ers based on the year was coined as well. And uh, just a, quite a strange coincidence. But uh, moving on, I'm going to show you quite a bit more stuff here. If my uh, screen will cooperate. Um, now, Su Super Bowl uh, 49 or excuse me, uh, uh, a previous Super Bowl where the Baltimore Ravens and the New York Giants played uh, against each other. Something I found interesting was when the Ravens played the New York Giants on January 28, 2001. It was then there shortly thereafter on 2000, in 2001 that 9-11 took place. Right? strange coincidence in that the Ravens played there and uh, they defeated the Giants and uh, I would say that it is a safe bet to say that the Ravens will defeat if the football game actually finishes the Ravens will defeat the 49ers if I was a betting man that's where I'd put my money now moving on Got a lot of stuff to show y'all guys. Now I mentioned the Edgar Allan Poe. Everybody has heard the name, familiar with him, famous poet. And I also mentioned to you that uh, the Ravens were named after the poem. They were named because of the poem, The Raven, right? Now the poem, The Raven, um, I'm going to read a little bit of it to you. I'm going to show you the rest and let you check it out. But I'm going to give you an overall of the meaning behind it and some of it says, uh, once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of, of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as some one gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this, and nothing more. Ah, distinctly, I remember it was the bleak December, and each sep separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I, I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books, surcease and sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. Now a couple of things I want to point out is the words forevermore what forevermore or let me go to the next slide for you or well, let me point out this is uh, forevermore I want to make 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 you uh, make note of that and the name Lenore okay okay and as you go through this entire poem reading it's a it's a very dark poem it's about loss and uh, it's about uh, never more having anything in your life that is good or the things that you thought you might have had 
possibility of having you will have never more just letting you I'm screening these up so you can have a chance to read these to read this poem in, a, in an effort to make this a little shorter I'm not going to read all of it here and now but you'll notice the nevermore showing up a lot talking about nevermore nevermore it's it was what the raven was saying now of course the raven is is uh, mythically is uh, said to be to hold the spirits of murdered people strangely and this is what they chose to, to be their to be their mascot and the name of their team the raven Now, as I go along through this, we're fixing to move on out of this into uh, a bunch more things. Um, but uh, as I go along through here, it's going to get very interesting. So hang in there. I'm just giving you some reference here of some things to keep in mind. Okay. I'll read you a few things here. Okay. A couple things you might not have known. Now, Edgar Allan Poe, born September 15th, 1871, November 29th, 1961, that's when he died. Well, wait a minute, I just said he died in 1849. Well, that's because Ed, there, there were two Edgar Allan Poe's. This is uh, Edgar Allan Poe's uh, cousin that you have displayed in front of you here. It says he was the uh, Attorney General of the State of Maryland from 1911 to 1915. He was born in Baltimore. The son of former Maryland Attorney General Joe Prescott Poe. His name he was named for his second cousin, twice removed, the celebrated author Edgar Allan Poe, who died in 1849. Poe attended Princeton University and played varsity football. He was the quarterback for the 1889 team, which finished with a perfect 10-0 record. After that season, Poe was named the quarterback of the 1889 College Football All-American team, the first such team selected. Poe joined his father and brothers in the family law firm, John Poe and Poe and Sons. Again, attorneys, right? Attorneys and politicians. He was appointed as the Deputy State's Attorney of Baltimore in 1900. The position held until 1903. He also served as Deputy City uh, solicitor and, and city solicitor for the city of Baltimore before being elected as attorney general to the state of Maryland, a position held from 1911-1915. The reason why I'm showing you that is strangely to show how how this other Edgar Allan Poe, he was, if you read on about him, you'll find out that he was the uh, considered to be the fo first football star ever. Okay. Edgar Allan Poe's the poet's second cousin. He was a member of the first team formed to, to play nationally. Strangely enough, right? And this brings us forward in kind of into a related but in similar subject in that here's here's our uh, fabulous ex-president and the uh, head of Skull and Bones out of Yale University, that secret society we've all heard of, and we're going to get into that a little bit more later. Here he is with the Ravens, um, accepting a uh, jersey and football and so on, right? Now, some of you guys might remember in, in the movie Batman, and I've demonstrated this and so have uh, other YouTubers out there, such as Monograph and others, uh, that uh, the 322 existed on the wall there in the, in the movie Batman in the football stadium that was destroyed, which we'll get into that here in a minute, and I'll show you some images of that. The 322. So what, why, would the, why is 322 in that movie? And what is 322? 322 represents several things. Okay, 322, for one, it's a, it's a New Orleans prefix in Louisiana. Okay? 322 is a prefix, not the area code like 504. 
the prefix. It gets area codes can cover large areas. 322 is specific to downtown New Orleans. Interesting, right? Here's a little bit more information on that area. Some things I wanted to point out. Of course, about the 322, which I've pointed out there at the top of the screen. And then it comes down, and strangely enough, the zip code, if you take 7 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2, it equals 11. That is an Illuminati kill number. Okay. And if you come down, a couple of other strange things I've seen, and I don't even know if this can be right. Of course, it says the population of New Orleans is almost a half a million, 484,000. And then you got, uh, it talks about estimated populations. According to this, it's saying there's only 181 white people in New Orleans. That just don't sound right to me. But that's what it says here. Now, I know that there's a high concentration of Latins and blacks, but only 181 white people? Hmm. I ain't even gonna say what I'm thinking. Now, the 322 number, what else that represents is that is the skull and bones number. Okay? 322. Now, if you don't know that much about skull and bones, I'll tell you a little bit about them. Skull and Bones is a secret society out of Yale University. This is a uh, an ancient picture. I'm not sure of the year that this was taken. Okay. Here's another one taken even older than that one. You can see that they were taken in the same locations, even with the same clock behind them. And then if we come forward in time a little bit, we'll find our we'll find Mr. Bush standing in the photo. And you can see that they are in fact skull and bones and three two two. Okay? So we're not making this up. This stuff that I'm showing you gonna show you today, I can't make up. Some more things on uh three two two and what it means. Skull and bones. Now three two two of course we already know they've, they, they accept that as putting that out there as their number. But what does it really mean? Well, this actually kind of goes through and explains some of it. Uh, like I said, he's, uh, it's out of Yale University. And 322 equals 3 plus 2 plus 2 equals 7. 7 times 2 equals 14. And if you, if you uh, take the fact that it was founded in 1832, if you take 1832 equals 1 plus 8 plus 3 plus 2 equals 14. And if you reverse those numbers, Bush was the 41st president. Okay? And of course, this here confirms or shows that um, he was, in fact, uh, um, a member and is, in fact, uh, well, he's in the photo. Now, what is, what is the skull and bones, the symb symbology behind that? It is, there are pirates. Now, how does that break down? Well, it, you have to actually break down the word pirate. If you take pi, which is 3.14, that is the beginning of it, which, which uh, in, is a complete circle, basically, is what pi represents. It's the, the, the way to calculate a circle's uh, circumference versus its diameter. And you take Ra, which is the sun god in which they worship, We'll get more into that. And then uh, the last letter there, T, basically for the sacrifice. Uh, of, uh, it's a sacrifice uh, letter. Okay? So what these guys are and what they are telling you, but they won't tell you directly. Somebody has to figure it out and bring it to you. And that, and that is is that they are pirates. They are ancient. Their bloodline is, is ancient pirates. Speaking of bloodline, all your presidents and all your people of in the history are related please come back for part two I've got about a hundred more slides to show you see you soon